Podcast. Torah just means instruction in Hebrew. At Torah Talk, we will make straight the ways of Yahuwah and discuss the simple truths of Scripture so that even you can understand and get all the juicy life hidden within the pages of Yahuwah's Torah. Welcome to Torah Talk with Lou White and Mark Davidson. <laughs> Hey, brother. Hello. Can you hear me all right? Yes, I can hear you. Fantastic. Hey, and I've got my coffee on me. And I think uh, the lovely Mrs. White gave me the uh, Bloom's coffee. Bloom's no, coffee. Bloom's, Bloom's, Bloom's coffee. Bloom's coffee. This is her cup. I use the radio cup with the lightning bolts. Yeah. yeah. She gave me this one. <laughs> Fantastic. Beautiful. Pasagini. Sounds kind of Italian, really. It does, doesn't it? It does. And you reckon they were, that's a reference to early Nazarene, do you? Yes, yes, I think that was uh, true. Uh, they were people that were keeping the Torah and circumcising their children, mm. you know, doing all the things in, in a very, uh, to the Catholics, it looked like they were acting like, you know, Yahudim. Yeah. And yet they believed in the Messiah. So, mm. see, they've been in pockets, and they probably passed this information down generation after generation, and they kept quiet because, you know, there was a severe penalty uh, always present for anyone who was, you know, any acted anything like a Yehudi. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I would imagine that it would be important for them to to keep quiet. They knew that they had probably lived in remote areas. Well, even the average person that lived in Europe was living in in a hut in a forest, mm. and that's wow. that was life. Mm. You know, they, uh, their everyday uh, job would be to go out and find enough food to survive the day mm. and fi find clean water. Yeah, and and they were dirty people, and they were, but they thought it was normal. And <laughs> and then the roadways, of course, yeah. even the roadways in the cities which were not really big cities. They were just little villages, really, that we call, you know, they're huge megalopolis, huge yeah. cities, but they were just little villages, really, and they were all dirt roads. Mm. That's what the cities were. And wow. uh, the actual roadways between cities uh, were long distances that went winding through as just paths in a forest. Wow. That was... Yeah. Wow. Of course, Rome. Rome was uh, able to build roads, and their roads were just chariot paths. And wow. uh, that was dirt, too. But mm. they had these ruts, and the ruts were dug in, and they were hardened in the sun. Mm. And if you have the uh, chariot path going from one place to another. And mm. that facilitated the spreading of the message, which mm. was a wonderful thing. See. And of mm. course, the language of most people understand this, that Greek was uh, widely known, much like English is today. So mm. that message that we see in Greek, even though the Hebrew is a mm. the original Hebrew is the thing that is hidden away yeah. or, or destroyed. But mm. the Greek survived because everyone was, well, not everyone, but most of the scholars and, and educated people were speaking Greek. Hmm. So the message was conveyed on that babble, that babbling tongue of Greek, and then hmm. today it's almost doing it again in the way that it's spreading around the world using the English language. So you and I are actually speaking the language of the day for the planet. Wow. Because it's hmm. the language of business. Hmm. See, the language of business is English, and the language of Yahuwah's business right now happens to be English too, although it is babbling. You know, mm. he, he's speaking to he speaks to his people on uh, with babbling lips, as he yeah. described. You know, ah. so but wow. we're still 
we're in the middle of that language, and we and we've got the correct message. Yeah, you know, it's it doesn't have all that religious uh, entanglement. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> it is. It yeah. is. We've got the roadway system, which is a, a means of communication, and then we've got the language as a means of communication as well. So yeah. both of those things are existing now, much like they did in the first and second century. Yeah. So yeah. it's really amazing. Mm. Yeah. Because remember, remember Paul when yeah. he was when he was first arrested for his protection. Yeah. Uh, the thing the thing he did was he turned to the commander. I think his name was Lysias or something like that, or Lysias, and. He, he turned to the commander and said something to him in Greek. And then the commander said, you speak Greek? He was totally amazed because mm. he was around it, people speaking Hebrew. Mm. And he probably had difficulty with that. You know? uh, yeah, yeah. But the, commander, the, the Roman commander was actually, or captain, was actually speaking uh, enough Greek to understand him. Yeah. And uh, that was an amazing thing for him because he was shocked. Yeah. So... So he would have spoken all those languages. He was an educated man, wasn't he? Shall yes, we? he was. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, the city of Tarsus was a uh, city that was very, it was, it was a, like a, a lot of roads went there. And mm -hmm. people going to and from great distances would stop there. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of exchange of information, news, mm -hmm. and certainly common, uh, common uh, exposure to other languages, you know, yeah. that were going. Uh, and of course, in that world, uh, Greek was very much alive. Even though Latin was starting to go on the rise, the Greek Empire was just recently, you know, in in its waning form. Mm. Yeah. Wow! And you're about to have you? You've already done a seminar. You're you're about to do a seminar on our dear brother Show. Show our beloved brother Paul. Yeah, our beloved brother Paul. Uh. Yeah. And we're we're talking about the our beloved brother Paul that uh, actually is dead, yeah. not the other guy that faked his death. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And he's probably watching this. You know, <laughs> if you mention his name, he might he might want to watch. It. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's funny. Uh. Well, yeah, I was going to do the alien. I was going to have an alien theme tonight, but I, we've already used up a lot of time, and I, I suspect once we start talking about aliens, we'll be here forever. So, I don't know if we oh. should. I don't know if we should leave it for another week. What do you think? <laughs> once, we open, that. once we open that you can know, of worms, <laughs> they're, when they start bringing the aliens out to talk to us on, in front of the television cameras, yeah, it's going to be a very deceptive thing yeah. because you know. See, what, what happened was back in the ancient world, they had professionals that would uh, convince the people of the opinions that they wanted them to have. Yeah. So these professionals, there would be professional speakers. And hang I on. was excited. Hang on a second. Yeah. I need a segue. So, brother, what do you think about aliens? <laughs> well, uh, aliens, uh, yeah. you mean not just illegal aliens. <laughs> aliens. What? You look like you're an alien. Yeah. I came, I came prepared. Oh, very nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's wonderful. Yeah. Why don't you try yeah. it? On? Why don't you try it? Well, I don't... Can you pass it through some kind of slot to me? I'm in, <laughs> I'm in North, North America. Here you go. Here you go. Oh, I dropped it. Here, here. Oh, here it comes. <laughs> wow, this is amazing. Huh. Oh. Well, how... Is an alien. Hello. Looks better on you than me. Oh no, really? <laughs> yeah. Does it cover cover everything up? Yeah, except the beard. Oh, wow, well, here. <laughs> we need to insert some funny uh cosmic music here. Yeah. <laughs> well here here's your mask back. Yeah. Oh thank you. Hey, oh. Man. Oh, wow. here we go. Wow. <laughs> Fantastic. Very tricky. So you reckon uh, you reckon when they start putting false, sh uh, yeah, what do you call them? Uh, what are they? Extraterrestrial well, biological entities in front of TV screens, then we're... 
then we're going to be seeing some things, and, and they're going to be lying to us. And, of course, uh, the thing that I was getting to about the way that people's opinions are shaped mm -hmm. is an ancient form of what, we, what they call sophistry. Mm -hmm. Now, sophistry mm -hmm. is based on the Greek words sophia. Sophia means wisdom. But the sophists, the sophists yeah, themselves, the sophists. Wear, they would wear the costumes mm -hmm. and the costumes. They'd have the collars and the costume, and they would have usually sometimes a little award, a little medal, uh, and they would stand up as professional speakers, and they would be inclined to deceive the people by means of a three-point speech. And they, you hear it from the especially politicians and, and preachers of Christianity. They will say, well, I've got three points to make here. Mm -hmm. And those three points give you the idea that they're going to use a depth of knowledge that you would never be able to reach unless you were a sophist yourself. Yeah. But in reality, what it is, it's just a way of bending things to make it appear a certain way and doing superficial little things. And it makes the listener feel like there's a lot of depth of knowledge. Yeah. And it's really just superficial nonsense. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, anyway, in convincing the, the audience of an opinion that they are forming in the audience, mm. they, the sophists themselves may not even believe what they're saying, but they're mm. being paid to make <laughs> these people convinced. Wow. And so, you know, and I've, I was raised in a, in a Catholic uh, education, mm. and of course, sophistry was used often. Mm. And of course, I hear it on the radio, I see it on TV, and I see politicians using it, Christian pastors. And when they use the three points that they want to make. That's an ancient Greek method mm. and of speak, public speaking. Mm. And it's a means of changing the opinions of the people and controlling what they want them to believe. Mm. And so we see that now in the presidents that speak and the kings. and Well, uh, mostly the, the president of the United States is usually the better the speaker they are, the, the more wool they can pull over people's eyes. Yeah, but the, when you see the three points actually starting with the same letter, then you know that the depth is mm. is really shallow yeah. because they don't have much to go on because they're making it appear that because these three points that they're making start with the same letter, then there's some cosmic reasoning behind it, and then <laughs> the person is just completely absorbed in it, like a motivational uh, speaker. This person's brilliant. Yeah. Well, you. See, you know when that's happening. Now, this can happen. I mean, sophistry can be used in a good way, mm. but it's not being used in a good way very often. Mm. So, mm. you know, I'm not condemning or judging people mm. who use sophistry mm. in those Greek te speaking techniques because but it's just that when you see it happening, you need to know it's happening yeah. so that you're not going to be swayed by that alone, mm. but listen mm. to the content. And usually the content is, is fallacious and specious. Now, mm. specious just mm. simply means deceptive. It sounds, uh, it sounds re reasonable, but it's actually based on a, on a false premise. Yeah. You can look it up. Look up the word sophistry on Wikipedia or a dictionary, mm. and you'll mm. see it. But uh, th that's the thing that's going to be used heavily by the aliens when they appear. In other words, when you get the translation, you'll hear this background, that's how you'll know that this ancient Greek technique, which is on Earth, and it's not in the rest of the universe, you'll know that this is what is really being done. Mm. Because they're not going to be able to obfuscate around their methodology, because they're going to use the same methods of deception, only they're going to have a different subject to, see, to deceive you on. So when you see the sophistry being employed, that's how you'll know it's not really space beings. <laughs> So when you uh, use the word aliens, for those of us who haven't seen your uh, amazing studies and presentations on YouTube, now go and check it out. Um, why are you using the word alien? There's no such thing as aliens, are there? Aren't we the most, uh, aren't we the most superior being, the creator created? Well, it may seem arrogant to say so, but it, it, it is true from the scriptures. We only can go by what scripture says. And it doesn't mention any other spatial beings than the messengers. The messengers are spatial beings, by the way. They are aliens. So the spirits of these fallen beings that have been thrown down to the earth, mm. 
mm. have been here since you know the beginning, and they have been in residence with the authorities and powers because they're controlling the earth right now, mm. and it's only those who can overcome the deception of their. Of, see, they make it look like we're doing everything, but it's not true. Right. And uh, so these spatial beings, which we call, uh, we, we know them as spirits, mm. and uh, sorcerers know them as uh, forces, and of course uh, the force is, uh, you know, used in Star Wars. <clears throat> there are actually spatial beings with incredible powers and abilities, but uh, they are limited, and they only have permission to do as much as they are permitted to do. They cannot harm unless they're given permission to harm. We see scriptural evidence of that uh, mm -hmm. in the book of Eo, for example. Uh, even, you know, the adversary had to get permission to touch Eo. Oh, and he was how, limited. Is that how you say how his name? That's good. Eob. 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 It's not, it's not Job, it's Eob. Right, mm. right. right. J. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's no J in Hebrew, so... Mm. So we know them as fallen, fallen Malachim. Was it one one third of them fell? Was it one third? One mm. third. So they're uh, so uh, in ancient times when there was Nephilim, they would uh, you know c uh, seduce the women and use herbs and that to try to breed with the women to form um, deformed beasts. And nowadays, what are they doing nowadays? You think that's what the alien crafts and and uh, alien shells that they're finding you don't think they're real aliens well not from other planet systems uh in the universe or our galaxy no there's so many other galaxies that it would be impossible for someone to conceive of moving from one galaxy to another in a human or or any other form of life you couldn't preserve it uh, and then again even with our own galaxy the, ne the nearest star to us is 4.3 light years away. Mm -hmm. And if you, even if you could get to half the speed of light and not manage to bump into any dark matter, <laughs> <laughs> bumping into anything would yeah. be a, you know, ca catastrophic. Yeah. I mean, a, a little uh, grain of sand that hits one of our space capsules is like a 45 shell, you know, a, a, a really serious caliber. Yeah. You know, it, it does a lot of damage. Mm. And uh, if, any, if it's any bigger, it becomes like a cannon, you know. Ah. Anyway, moving around uh, in interspatial areas or interstellar areas is unlikely. So uh, anyway, what would be their motivation to come here anyway? I mean, you know, yeah. and, and keep pestering us and hiding from us. Yeah. The actual reason that they are hiding from us is because they don't want to get unmasked. You know, mm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, we just asked ourselves. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can't. You gave it back. <laughs> oh, I can't get it back? Okay. <laughs> Here you go. You can have it. There you go. Oh. <clears throat> I keep dropping it on the floor. Sorry. It's a very interesting mask. <laughs> yes. And how it's getting over here, I have no idea. Yeah. We've found Could a, be a trip. We've found a yeah. stargate, brothers and sisters. Ah. Yes, mm. indeed. Mm. Yeah, star slot, actually. You put mail through it. <laughs> <laughs> so the um, it, what what part do you think they will play as the as the great deception and tribulation gets deeper? And what part do you think? What's the point of the adversary using? Um, I don't know. What's the point of him breeding empty shells when he can just? I mean, you look at us. We can get used by demons all the time in the words we say and stuff if we're not conscious and checking our thoughts why would he need to breed because that's what we recognize that the aliens that they've found are they're they're bred yeah. the empty shells of beings and the spirits want to inhabit them why, why would he why bother why not just use a person well they do they use people who have accepted the beings to come into them and we know that more than one can go into a person yeah. uh, the person in the body uh, as we understand it from scripture is uh, the strong man who already lives in the house mm. in other words your, your house is your body mm. that's your tent you know your tent and then inside of you is the life force that is you which we call you know the heart the you know scripture 
And then, of course, that can be pushed aside and controlled by another entity. In our case, we want that control to be Yahusha and let Yahusha speak and act through our bodies. And we become living sacrifices for his use. Hmm. Now, uh, in the case of a demonically possessed person, that same thing is happening in operation, only they're pushed aside and they allow the demonic force, you know, the being, to ex exhibit their will hmm. and, and, and use their body to interact with the physical world. Yeah. There's, yeah. Uh, so the, the motivation would be to put the demonic forces at, at the highest levels of governing so that the people who are in government will be able to control the world and mm -hmm. using uh, power and money and sex and all the other things that cause people to, you know, the body of the person to be willing to cooperate, then they would be uh, you know, able to control the world through these people. And it only takes a few people to be controlled like that, to be, and the rest of them can just be deceived, mm. you know. But then I understand that uh, there's a, like when the Nephilim were making bodies for themselves using women, that would be the, the, the female egg, of course. All eggs are female, by the way, in case people don't know. Uh, <laughs> the uh, egg is the facilitation for genetic manipulation, you know. And mm. uh, as we know now, genetic the genetic thing that's going on in the world, uh, all the experiments they're using with uh, changing and splicing genes into from mosquitoes and pigs into into tomatoes and all this sort of thing, <laughs> they're they're creating monstrosities. Mm. Uh, what was that? Some kind of thing that happened recently in the news that some of us will know about was the alligator snouts they're, that they're manipulating on chickens. So oh. the chicken doesn't have a beak, it's got an alligator snout now. And they're using, see they're monstrosities. With sharp teeth? Well, I don't know if there's, I guess, I don't know. Wow. But they're, it's really bizarre, and Yahuwah's mm. creation is being meddled with. Yeah. And this has to play into uh, some form of an abomination mm. of desolation. Yeah. The abomination of desolation is going to be a particular thing, but it's also been going on, too. Because you see, back in Antiochus Epiphany's day, 186 BCE, there, there was an abomination of desolation there, too, because there was something that was in the temple that shouldn't have been there, you know, an image of the, you know, the, the sun deity, mm. as the Greeks worshipped it. But, of course, uh, these abominations... Uh, they're, they're desolating the plant life, too. I mean, all our crops are genetically yeah. manipulated, mm. you know. Yeah. And from what you were saying last week, or if we actually put out more carbon dioxide, we'd be getting more plant life. It's the other way around from what they're saying. We should yes, be it is. Mm, trying it, to destroy it, it, the planet. A lot of things that are said by these sophists mm. <laughs> yeah. are... Uh, their the reasoning is superficial, but it's very much just to change opinions. And you take a, for example, take the idea of uh, recycling. You know, when you yeah. have plastic or something, you know, yeah. and they say, well, see, plastic is a great thing, and it's not a, a specific substance. It's just a general term for anything that can be formed into shapes. It's much much more efficient to make and to, and to ship using plastic than it is glass or any other containers. Mm. Uh, paper is not conducive to many things, uh, and neither is glass because it's so heavy. And here's the thing. The plastic is lightweight. It can be formed to shape anything, and it's long-lasting. Yeah. And so shipping through pla in plastic is better, but they don't like plastic because it doesn't go away. Uh. Well, neither does glass. Glass is sand. Mm. Sand is not an evil thing. Mm -hmm. you know. It, they don't complain about it not going away. They mm. say, this stuff's mm. laying around on the highways. Well, uh, pick it up <laughs> or don't <laughs> there. But yeah. don't say they want it to biodegrade. Yeah. You see, if something biodegrades, <clears throat> they, they, they actually say biodegradable things are good. Yeah. But biodegradable things actually get 
broken down into their constituents for things, and then they go into your water supplies. It's actually a means of polluting our planet. It wow. is the major thing that's causing the problem. It's not uh, wow. people's uh, plastic cups. No. It's no. the biodegradable things. And yet people's opinions are formed wow. by sophistry, sophistry yeah. because yeah. it's, it's pseudo-wisdom yeah. in order to make our behavior and our opinions of things. And the masses are buying it. See, we're just sheep. We'll believe anything that the sophist tells us yeah. as long as they use those three point speeches yeah. and they say these are, here's the thing reasons it's going to be good. Mm. Well, it's really just uh, it's just a it's a, it's just a big bag of lies. Mm. Anyway, so you don't agree. so you don't have a recycle bin. <laughs> I uh, they're all over our city. Oh, okay, they're all over our city, mm. but yeah. Oh, wow. There are certain dangerous things that need to be kicked. Uh, never, well, they should have never been made in the first place, like CFL bulbs. They shouldn't have ever been made. Fluorescent bulbs. Yeah. They, they had their place for a time, but when we realized the dangers of them, we needed to stop making them. And we needed to put our technology to work in uh, LED. You know. Okay. What's wrong with fluorescent bulbs? They're, well, everywhere, they they're everywhere over here. Oh, they contain I'm MER. The <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As as am I, I'm, I'm sitting under two of them. <laughs> one of them, well, they're both CFLs. Anyway, the uh, if I, if I had an, an LED, it would it would be there. But in fact, here's an LED right here. This is a looks like a lightsaber. Yeah. But this part is the light, and there's a, an array of three columns of LEDs, yeah. and this thing can really it puts out the light. Yeah. If I do it like It'll look more like Vincent Price. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, LED is the way to go. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, it's it's my uh, main flashlight. You yeah. Know. I keep it right here next to my bicycle horn. Yeah. And uh, you know yeah. it's always handy whenever I have an emergency. Yeah. Lights go out. Bicycle horn. Flashlight right there. We've used anyway. the, we've used the force and the lightsaber in the one episode. How good is exactly. that? Exactly. Yeah. Well, we're talking aliens. That's it, mate. But, so when you see the, uh, I think you sent some footage a few weeks ago, a couple of months ago, about these uh, spacecrafts hovering over Jerusalem. What's your take on that? Who, you know, and well, these? Yeah. I don't really. I can't really say what it was. Yeah. Uh, it 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 could have been something that was a. Uh, well, all I can really remember, and I want to go by this mostly, I lean towards. The fact that Yahusha told us that there would be signs in the heavens, and that's certainly in the skies. It's a sign of some sort. And, of course, these things that are coming at us, like Alanin and uh, these other objects, they're, uh, they're signs in the heavens, you know, whether you're going to call them brown dwarfs or comets yeah. or whatever. They're, they're yeah. signs in the heavens. and wow. We're just yeah. saying that these are signals. That's what sign means. It's a signal. It's something that is signaling something. The uh, birth is what it's coming. It's saying the birth is coming, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, we should be paying attention. And of course, the world is ignoring scripture. They haven't read it mm -hmm. for the most part. But uh, those of us that have see these things in there. So I would always say, let's lean towards the fact that this is a sign. So let's just pay attention to it. Of course, it didn't give us any more information that it's popping in and popping out. So. Hmm. But it was very interesting. Now, there was a fake one made right behind that, and it looked real fakey. And oh. uh, I think that was to make it, uh, you know, appealing to the to the doubters. You know, okay. there was no, you know. Oh. So, so if you want a way out, you can, you can choose to say, well, that wasn't really a valid king. But I probably would, if I were given the uh, opportunity to say, well, what do you really believe in your heart of hearts? I would say... That was probably a real messenger, yeah. Mm. Wow. But there are going to be more and more of those as we go through time, because I, a lot of a lot of people uh, have been coming. I'm, I'm not setting dates, and I pray that Yahuwah comes as soon as possible. But yeah. it could be in the you know 25, uh, 2025, 2028, mm. sometime like that. But we need a lot of work done before then, because there's a lot of people that are that are really. Mm. Uh, confused and lost. Mm. When you said, 
Yeah, when you said you think it was a, a Malachim, you mean they that was its its being, or you mean it was a government made spaceship from underground somewhere, or you think the Malachim can just present themselves like that and fly around and reveal and disappear, and it's not some secret. Well, the, the silence of this thing that I, I when I saw that one in Jerusalem, the way I saw that was it was completely silent. It came down slowly, and it was very easily seen, and then it illuminated the domes and various buildings with a perfect, and there was multiple camera angles from people's cell phones and video cameras. So we, we know that they were all, you know, seeing the same object at the same time. Mm -hmm. And uh, the simultaneous, you know, broadcast of various angles of, the behavior of this thing and the, and it was silent i don't think it was a technological thing i think it was just like what we would have seen if if we were there when the tomb was uh the rock was rolled away from the tomb there was a bright light that was like sustained lightning and that's what this appeared to be you know when this malachim came down and rolled away the stone and the the soldiers that were standing there felt the traumatized you know oh. Not to, not as much terrified as they should have been. Yeah, terrified. <laughs> yeah. They were traumatized, and yeah. they were like, they became like like dead men. Mm. So uh, this is probably the same sort of thing that we were seeing on video. But I think we're going to see more and more of those things, mm. and some of them will be deceptions, and some of them will be uh, real. Because we but, forget, uh, we forget that the fallen Malachim are very very powerful. They, aside from the creator, they have all the power of the universe, don't they? They're the second most, well, how would you put it? They're the, well, they are beings. They're cre yeah. create beings, and they can only be in one place at one time. Okay. That's one of the nice things about it, because they couldn't ride two horses at the same time or drive two automobiles. One being can only do what one being can do, and they are passing through time. They're not time travelers, but they are interdimensional beings. Okay. They're spatial beings, so that they can they can go from one level of existence down to our lower level that we once fell from. They, they're above us mm. in a higher plane of existence, in a higher dimensional space of reality that we are unable to see unless our eyes are open to it. You know. So you think uh, the heavens, instead of going up into heaven, you, you believe it's going into dimensions. Right. In other words, right. the throne room is here in another dimension. Or it's not because people look up to the sky and oh heaven's up there and hell's down there and you know, whereas it's actually in the do you watch that show, The Fringe? You like the fringe? Oh yes, I've seen those episodes. Yeah, where they go travel in the same world into dimension. It's like that, isn't it? Well he's in our <laughs> hearts, so he Yeah well they use drugs a lot of times. Yeah, you know? yeah, a lot of drugs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and my uh, partner, Bob, uh, you know, who we pray for every day, yeah. multiple times, he was uh, saying to me something, something to me yesterday about uh, the computers are probably going to have video screens where people can get hypnotized into thinking they're on drugs. So they won't need to trans transport drugs anymore. That's clever. <laughs> Form a hit, like well, a hi hypnotistic thing, or a hypnotistic uh, drug addict. Yeah. <laughs> There'll be a whole bunch of them on. I wonder, uh, wonder what the yeah. wonder what the hangover for that one would be. <laughs> oh, no talent. Wow. Probably well, horrible things, but you know, ultimately, it, it, everything causes cancer. <laughs> That's, it. That's it. So you so you think um, that when it talks about the different levels of uh, like heavens or skies, it's it's talking about different dimensions. Is that what you think? That's it. Yeah, that's mm. uh, more realistic yeah. uh, because if we were to go on a hunt in this dimension for uh, extraterrestrials. <laughs> no. We could go uh, into the universe and not find them. Yeah. They're they're interdimensional, but they're they're not able to go forward and backward in time mm. because there's uh, some Yahuwah created time when he created the first day, and. Then he created the second day and the third day, and so time was being stretched out as it was as creation progressed. And then 
at the end of the seventh day after he rested, there was no eighth day. It was just the first repeated. It was, it's a repeating cycle, yeah. you know. So, uh, mm -hmm. and that's the, that's the key. See, he created the lights in the sky to be for signs, uh, Moedim, and seasons, uh, and for days and years. Mm -hmm. but, and, 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 of course, one of those would be months. But uh, there's no weeks in there, just days. Mm -hmm. So the days are, according to the, it's established by the sun and the returning of the earth, but there's not a, you know, a place for time to be measured in weeks in the in the lights. You know, mm, yeah. So that's that's amazing. People need to know that um, the kingdom of Shamaim is in another. It's not millions of kilometers away out beyond yeah. up in the galaxies. It's it could be right here, but it's in a different dimension. Yeah. Right. Uh, and so, which shows that Yahushua is very close. It's, Really close if he's in your heart, but he's, he's very, it's not a long way away. He's, he's close to us. Right. Yeah, the spirit of his son is living in those that have submitted to his will and become immersed. And yeah, so the spirit of Yahushua is in each one of his followers hmm. all at the same time, which yeah. is not a, a possibility for any created being to be there. Uh, the people who have been raised in a religion that teaches that Yahusha is like the adversary, uh, like Michael the Archangel, for example. Yeah. Michael the Archangel. He can't be in more than two places, in one place. He can't, he can't be in two places. Mm -hmm. So we know mm -hmm. that Yahusha is not Michael, you know, because right. he can't be in more than one place. Mm -hmm. we, were, we were looking at... Um a week or so ago at the, the Archangel, at the Messenger, Gabriel, and now he was the he was the one to tell Daniel, give Daniel all those wonderful, amazing things, and then Daniel had to shut the book, and then there was like 400 years or something of, of silence, and then the first one to pop up on the scene again to, to Miriam, <clears throat> or was it Joseph? I forget, Joseph, uh, about the Messiah, was Gabriel again, so... We realize that no matter what goes on in in man's kingdoms, Yahushua's got his plan, and it's not it's not uh, determined by what's going on in men's kingdoms. He can wait four hundred years and still send the same messenger to to tell to say the same thing. What he's going to do, it's not it's all he's in control of everything, isn't he? Yes, yes, and uh, Gabriel, of course, is an immortal, so mm. he's not going to have any aging going on. <clears throat> Neither would we if we were not fallen, mm. but we are we are mortal. Mm. Now the component that's inside us, mm. we call the heart or our spirit, is immortal, and of course that's controversial with a lot of people. They're taught by their sophistry uh, elders that uh, that's Greek, yeah. you know, that's Greek thought. But you know, everything the pagans believe was an error, yeah. you know, about that's the soul. The Everyone's trying to minister to the soul and heal the soul these days. There's no such thing as a soul. I'm not so, sure I follow you. But. Well, everybody's going to psychiatrists and trying to, you know, get their soul. You cleanse your soul and healing for oh, your yeah. soul. And there's no such thing as a soul, is there? Yeah. And those, well, yeah. There's a there's an inner spirit yeah, yeah. that we that he created that we are, and that's what makes us extremely interesting to the messengers, the the Malachim, because we're interacting with the physical universe and yet we have something another component to us that can only be destroyed by the one that made that and so we've got a spirit and we've got a physical part too mm -hmm. they don't have that they've just got the spirit but they've got incredible power and intellect and of course all that knowledge from the having lived as long as they have since they were created so we're just babes to them mm -hmm. we look very uh, you know and our understandings are very darkened yeah. and our ability to understand too. So we can't really understand everything either because we don't have the brain for it or the mind. Mm -hmm. Our inner mind is our heart, which is the immortal component. But that can't be destroyed. He said you should fear the one that can destroy the body mm -hmm. and the spirit. Yeah. In other words, uh, the body can be destroyed by any anything, accidents or intentional, uh, whatever. But there's another component that can't be harmed you know, by even spiritual beings. 
yeah. uh, except by the one that, that created it. And that's yeah. the reason that I believe that we do have an immortal component. And that's what makes us intriguing to these fallen messengers. Because mm. they, they can't make more of themselves. But yet we can. So you've made... Uh, you've made five little little spirits. I mean, through you, you were used yeah. to make five little spirits, yeah. and inside each one of your children, there's a being that's immortal, and uh, their body is is fragile and and, 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 and mo very mortal, and, and, and it will eventually die. Mm. But the inside, the thing that's really valuable, mm. is that precious spirit that was put into that vessel. Mm. So we are really containers. Of something very special, and uh, he's going to give us a new body to control, to get a new yeah. vessel, a new tent. What do you think that vessel is going to be like? I mean, you think it's going to be like Yahusha's when he walked through walls? And well, we can't really compa compare it to anything in the physical known universe because yeah. you know if mm -hmm. we start talking about worms and butterflies, then we're missing the mark too. Yeah. But we will transform into something just like him, mm -hmm. and. We will be able to pass through walls because we will be interdimensional beings once again. See, right now we're not interdimensional beings in the sense that we can use those things. But we are in another dimension in our heart. See, that spirit that is within us is in another dimension, but it's, but it's inside the vessel that we call the physical universe too. And so we move together. And when that one goes away, then there's no more contact for that spirit. With the, There's no connection with the physical world that we live in and see and breathe air in. Mm. But uh, that vessel, that inside, the, the thing that's precious that's inside our vessels, doesn't have to breathe air. And it's mm. not harmed by hot or cold or hunger or thirst. You know, that, that isn't happening, you know. So when we die, that, that, um, that just, what, sleeps until Yahushua returns? Right, right. and then we, when he restores it to a, another vessel, he he puts he it may come from that and develop it, and and then we've got a a new vessel you know mm -hmm. to be and it'll be eternal immortal and then the ones that are raised and judged and they're not found to be in the scroll of life that whole their whole physical being and spiritual being will be destroyed forever in the lake of fire mm -hmm. so they'll actually feel the resurrection mm -hmm. and the and what they will what they have, and then they're going to see the fact that they're going to lose it, mm. and that in that moment they're going to really realize the loss. So, does every single human being is every single human being immortal, or is it only when we are? I was, going to, I was about to say born again. When we're begotten, when we get His Spirit in us, is that when begotten. we're immortal, or is every single human being immortal? Well, that's a good question, and I don't know the answer, and I don't know anybody that can really say. Right. But I think that my theory is that we receive eternal life only from the one that comes to, to live in us. And, mm -hmm. and he imparts that. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's what I lean toward. Now, uh, the person that dies, I think he has a spirit, even though he doesn't have Yahusha. And that spirit is awakened from a sleep of some kind. Mm -hmm. And then, but apparently there is something to be said about. The fact that that even an unbeliever has a has a, a component within them, but you know, then again, how much are we? He, how, he hasn't revealed it. So anybody that says that they know for sure has to be, uh, you know, going out on, on a limb to some large extent. Hmm. But that still wouldn't contradict um, the everlasting life because when he when he puts them in the lake of fire, he has I, the he has the power to. Because he made the spirit, so he has the power to to snuff it out, and right. so, so we would be getting everlasting life. Um, I guess yes, if, we would. I guess if you didn't use the word immortality, we could still say everlasting life. Those who come to him have everlasting life. Right. He, he lets them live on forever, whereas the others get snuffed out. Right. Uh, yeah, so in the in, in the semantics of it, in the mm. what we're understanding the words to really mean, mm. then it could be the way you say. Yeah, I agree with what you just said. In fact, that's mm. a better way of saying it. Wow, what about that? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> that's weird. Yeah, so uh, that's amazing. Aliens.
<laughs> really. Yeah. But the, so the fallen beings are all around us. The phantoms yeah. fill the skies, and yeah. you know they're uh, they're fallen and unfallen. We 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 have protectors. There's a, there's messengers, or what the Greek word is angels. And that means messenger. Uh, Malachim is the Hebrew word, and they're uh, appointed to watch over the children of Adam. You know, <clears throat> and uh, we're they're guardians too. So we we're guardians, and they're guardians, and uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're going to be judging their uh, their ability to uh, have done their job well. You know. Yeah. So we have to be careful that we don't do things that are misleading to them either when we because they can see us it's like a little peephole in the, in the fabric of space time they can see everything that we do now i don't believe they can read our thoughts that's just okay. what i believe though i don't believe that they know what we're thinking that's why we, they, we that's why we can pray silently in our in our thoughts and yahua only can read them he can only he can read our thoughts because he searches minds and hearts and when he searches our minds and our hearts, which is the same thing, that's our uh, spiritual component. Mm. Uh, what our body's doing doesn't matter. But <coughs> the, the, mm. the fallen messengers cannot possibly uh, read our thoughts. Yes. What 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 could we do that's misleading to uh, one our protecting protective angels, Malachim? You said you said we shouldn't do things that could be misleading. What would be misleading? There's a there's an example in scripture where I forget the text exactly where it's located, but it's something that shot, uh, Paul wrote about uh, head coverings. You know that uh, the woman's head should be covered in the assembly, and you know uh, the fact that uh, the man's head is Messiah, mm. and his head should not be covered, and uh, but that woman should be covered for the sake of the messengers. Now, that, that's a statement that we don't understand. I don't understand what the reasoning for that is. But for the sake of the messengers, the woman's head should be covered in order to show the authority of her husband over her. Oh. You know? And apparently, that means a lot to the messengers because they have a, a, an authority over them too. And we don't want them to be thinking lightly of that authority, you know. What sort of covering should they be wearing? What? Uh, well, the covering that they're wearing is, of course, uh, the kabod of Yahuwah. You know. Oh, okay. So you're not endorsing funny hats. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not, I'm not. But uh, I think that meta uh, figuratively we uh, can look at things, and we can look at things physically too. Mm. You can interpret things physically, and if we stick on that plane alone, yeah. that's what we really <clears throat> miss the whole, what the thing is pointing to, mm. and. What we have here is we've got a figurative thing that's being that's the more important thing, and then we've got the physical thing that's that's referring to that, like mm -hmm. people that put hats on and things like that. Um, they can do that. That's a fine thing to do, but it's not the point. That's mm -hmm. you know it's it's the idea that we're pointing to, and uh, and when people get wrapped up in the physical and they don't care anything about anything else. Then that's where they're limiting themselves, and they're frozen in a in a in a cocoon of uh, well, it's another stronghold because yeah. they've limited what they want to think about. You know, yeah. uh, I personally don't require my wife to have her head covered when we go into the assembly, yeah. but others that go to the assembly they do, even unmarried women and yeah. uh, married women alike. But the uh, fact is, they're not speaking against their husband when they're in the assembly. The gossiping. That when when people come together into an assembly and they start talking to one another, well, let me tell you about what my husband did. Oh no, well I've got something. It's even bigger than that story. And then they start dis uh, mm. dishonoring their their covering. Yeah, you know, and it isn't about what they're wearing on their head. You know, see, mm. what they're wearing on their head is just a sign that that they have an authority over them. You know. Yeah. But uh, but now men that put hats on, there's not any requirement for such a thing. Moshe mm. would not mm. know what that was. Mm. Um, he, he'd look at these little domes and he'd say, well, 
what is this exactly? Why are all these people wearing these? And, mm -hmm. but, and that became imposed by Antiochus Epiphanes, the little Greek hat of H-E-R-M-E-S, the deity of wisdom. Oh, the scholars, the scholars hat. Oh, the that's, university hats. That scene in the yes, in the graduation that they've got a mortar board, yeah. which is a square piece that's placed on the top of a dome hat, which is the hat of H E R M E S, and uh, it's it's the hat of a scholar. Wow. And the scholar, the deity of scholars is H E R M E S. It's a Greek mm. thing, you know, mm. but that was imposed and uh, you know upon the Yahudim mm. and. Uh, by Antiochus Epiphanes, and they never, they never lost it. You know. So when you talk about the figurative hats and clothes and beards and things like that, do you um, <clears throat> why do you wear a beard for Yahusha, or do you wear a beard just so you don't offend other believers? Because there's a scripture somewhere that says don't um, cause a stumbling block, isn't it for other for younger. Yes, well, that's true, too. Is that why you would wear a beard, or is it just because it's easier? <laughs> well, it is easier. Uh, however, when we uh, obey Yahuwah's commandments and we learn to love them and we start looking for more to obey rather than figuring out ways to get around the few that we, that we find, oh. we would be better off uh, having a heart for obedience. And uh, what I wear... Seat seats for is because he's commanded us to wear them, and it does help me remind, remind me of Torah. Mm. That's what their function mm. is. It's not for other people to see them. See, the outward show of things is what Yahusha had a problem with. You know, the Pharisees were interested in the outward show uh, to be hypocritic. They were hypocrites, they were actors. Mm. They really didn't care about what they were doing, they were just doing it for other people to think about mm. how set apart they were. Yeah. Uh, beards, uh, beards, it says uh, that we don't tattoo our bodies. You don't put tattoos on. Mm. But apparently pagans did. And you don't cut yourselves like for the dead. You don't uh, mutilate your flesh. Uh, you don't uh, shave or destroy your beard is what it means. To utterly lay waste to your beard if you're a man. Mm. Uh, so if you don't lay waste to your beard, that doesn't mean you can't trim it. Mm. But some people interpret that you can't cut it at all. And that's not mm. true. You can see the, 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 the Levitical priests who handled a lot of food and cooked the food and mm. worked in food mm. service. And they were also physicians uh, mm. for the tribes. Mm. They had to keep their hair wow. mostly. Yeah, uh, yeah. Could not have unkempt hair. It had to be well controlled and mm. it had to not mm. be long. But mm. other people could wear it any way they wanted. Mm. But they didn't destroy their beards, you know, yeah. utterly. But they could certainly trim them. And uh, we're all priests uh, mm. in the Order of Melchizedek. Yeah. All of the followers of Yahushua. Mm. Wow. Yeah. I've lost that. See, the... your beard's coming in nicely. <laughs> yeah. Check it out. Yeah. yeah. Check it out. Covers my double chin. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Did you notice yet? Yeah, this is good. Look at this in yeah. fact, when I see someone come into the store, I say, uh, wow, that's a very righteous beard you have there. <laughs> righteous beard, bro. <laughs> yeah, buddy. And they love it, you know. Yeah. Mm. They really they dig that word, righteous. They yeah. It's a modifier. Well, uh, talking about outward signs and things, it's on my mind now. We um like we got four boys and um we've only been in that room a few years so we I mean none of our boys are circumcised we didn't know anything and down here there's a there's a lot of arguments about it you know it's it's this it's that it's you know so I sort of interpreted it as you know adult males I know they're not adults but I mean they're not eight days old either so should we be going along and getting them circumcised when they're six or seven years old as I mean. Oh, uh, that is a tough question. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the uh, requirement for this trying to make this, this doesn't have to be on record. I just was asking for myself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a that's a tough call. I personally would not subject my children mm. to such a trauma when it is unnecessary. Yeah. Even though people say that it is necessary for salvation, I don't agree with that. Yeah. Because. Uh, and that's why a lot of people don't like Paul. 
is mm. because he was very, very clear. In fact, he was almost violent about it. Mm. He was saying, you shouldn't be doing this to people, you know, because mm. that's not the point. The uh, living as a Yahudi in the uh, sense that we're keeping the ceremonial laws mm. to make themselves righteous is error. And that mm. means that the Messiah is going to be of no use to us. Yeah. And it's important. Mm. But once you've passed that eighth day, and mm. you have, uh, even though Moshe was, you know, his son was past eight days, and he had mm. failed to circumcise him, that mm. was still during the time of the ceremonial operation. That, mm. that was, things were completely, and I'm not, not trying to make it different in, in, the, in, in the sense that uh, salvation is involved. We, we should be under, under the authority of the Messiah, and the outward sign now is immersion. Mm. So immersion is our sign of you know, circumcision. And mm. the circumcision that's done by Messiah is the only one that matters. Mm. So yeah. we can't possibly improve our flesh or our standing before Yahuwah by doing anything like that in our mm. flesh. Yeah. You know. You just reminded me of a question. That's that's great, brother. Um, uh, it's a relief. Yeah, it's a big relief. My wife would not have been happy. Um, we uh, <laughs> see. Um, she was reading Exodus a couple of months ago, and she was. Um, she said to me, "How come when Moshe got the word from on the mountain to go back to Egypt, and you know, let my people go and all that, why did Yahuwah come after him and try and kill him?" And I thought, I don't remember reading that. And she said, yeah, it's there. Yahuwah came after him and tried to kill him. I said, I'm going to have to ask Lou about that. And then I forgot about it. Well, do, you, do you remember that bit? I remember it. Uh, and I recall that it was because of the fact that Moshe had not circumcised his, his son. Oh. And his wife took a sharp stone yeah. and circumcised the boy mm. as Yahuwah was approaching Moshe. And she threw the foreskin in oh, front man. of Moshe. Uh, ah, and, yeah, and, and it seemed like it was at his feet or something. Mm, yeah. uh, it was somewhere, and uh, then Yahuwah's anger subsided. His wrath was kindled mm. because he had fully obeyed him. Ah. and yet uh, mm. today the <laughs> uh, circumcision yeah. was a uh, method, and we and we I, and I still teach people that if you're going to have a, a new a new son, mm. that you should aim for the eighth day to have mm. that son circumcised. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, knowing that now. But it's mm. like someone gets a tattoo. Yeah. The tattoo, if you've, if you've done that and then mm. you become a father, the tattoo cannot be seen by you. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing is true of circumcision. If you as a father had no knowledge and you mm. were uh, you know, guiltless about that, mm. and then you become a follower, to mm. go back and circumcise your children who are six, seven, eight, or fifteen, mm. or whatever. Mm. In fact, uh, they say that the Islamic people, and I haven't done a lot of study on this, that they circumcise their their sons when they're thirteen, and it wow. really popular. And they circumcise women too, mm. wow. in order to move any kind of pleasure that they might receive from sex, mm. and uh, it just makes them basically just uh, tra they're tra it's traumatizing. Mm. It's absolutely unbelievable. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, the the circumcision is done by Messiah, our heart, when he comes into us and, and gives us, and we receive a love for the truth, which mm. is his, and his covenant is received as he inscribes a love for our hearts and mm. builds on that as we learn, you know. Mm. But if we keep going back to our flesh and saying, well, I need to improve myself, Mm. Or I, I need someone else's help other than Messiah's help. Then we're going in the wrong direction, and, you, and Messiah cannot help us any any further because we're mm. looking in the wrong place. Yeah. Why do you think? Um, it just reminded me when we were talking about Daniel a couple of weeks ago, and we happened to mention that he was a eunuch. Why? Why do you think he was? Would he have done that to himself, or would they have done that to him? Why? Why would? <laughs> He was a young boy. We don't know exactly how old. However, when was he a young away, boy? Was he? Yeah. Wow. And he was he was well educated, of course. Uh, before he was he was in royalty, and the 
the fact that he was royalty, he was treated differently than the general population. And when he was taken to Babylon, he may have been circumcised right away. But here's the, the, the key to that is he had no wife, okay? He had no offspring. He also was appealing to the chief of the eunuchs for permission for a special diet, okay? So who, what would be the reason for him to go to the chief of the eunuchs? <laughs> because uh, mm. that's where he was. He was in a in a situation where he was like a, a, a eunuch, and he was being trained in the Babylonian philosophies. I'll say uh, a eunuch, uh, he may not necessarily have... Um had had his parts cut off he was that was like a a sect was it or do you think he was actually a eunuch yeah i think they uh, castrated him okay yeah. yeah and you know that was done just flippantly in some periods of time like when the catechetical school of alexandria was underway mm. they were they were castrating themselves and some of them would self castrate themselves mm. and castrate one another to subside the urges of the male uh, oh, needs, yeah, and yeah. then and later on they outlawed that. But then sometimes mm -hmm. uh, during the Middle Ages, they would castrate young boys to keep their voices high so that they could sing. Uh, and the, mm, the choir. The choir. Wow, one different. Well, obviously worked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't like to think of Daniel as having a high voice though. <laughs> Just yeah. a bad picture of my mind. We'll have to tell Adam about that when he records Daniel. <laughs> yeah, and not only that, but you wind up in the Messianic Hall of Shame just like that. <laughs> well, now. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> well, mm. sorry. You've been talking. Uh, it's almost time for me to be leaving. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great. So, we, we talked about UFOs. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And we can come back to that any time, you know. Yeah, yeah. And the we didn't talk about today is a you know, really good thing. Yeah, you know. Yeah. We didn't talk about the moon. Oh, the moon. Oh, gee. And we missed it. I'm going to have to put a can <laughs> I'm going to have to put a counter up on our screen every time the moon said click click click. Yeah. Click. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. Boy. Yeah. <laughs> that's wild. Oh, wonderful. So, how do you like my shirt? Oh, that's a nice one. Yeah. It's a pop. It's, it's a very the, nice pop. It's around the right way, too. It's lovely. Yeah. yeah. It's a little embroidery work. Yeah. A little golden thread here and Gee, your, black thread. Your wife must be busy with the needle and thread. <laughs> no, 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 that's not happening. Uh, <laughs> you've got these things on the internet. You know. I see. Yeah. It fits me well. You know, yeah. I, I'm really comfortable in this. It's a really nice material. Yeah. Yeah. It's heavy, but it's, you know, durable, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. You're off to work today. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I have to work. Yeah. I have to work in that evil store <laughs> oh, where Spook Central is encasing all of these idols yeah. and things yeah. that people don't bow down to. Did you get, my, no did you get yeah. much Australian music there? or you? Well, I wish we did. I don't. The, oh, we don't hear much from them. I'll have to um, send you over some stuff. Well, the BGs is the biggest thing that's come oh, okay. across here. You heard, you, of, know, you heard of John we Farnham? Love, who? You heard of John Farnham? John Farnham. Is he that guitar player? No, that's Tommy Emmanuel. I'll have to send you some John Farnham. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> wonderful. Tommy Emmanuel is awesome. Yeah. You know. And, I mean, being a guitar player myself, he was scaring me. He was, you know? He's freaky, isn't he? It's yeah. just freaky, yeah. yeah. And it's using a nylon string for the most part. I yeah. mean, he does steel and electric too. But yeah. there's, a, you know, I used to think that uh, that evil Jimi Hendrix, I'm yes. not judging, uh, <laughs> was one of the best guitar players, died at the age of 27, yeah. uh, had done so much mm. for the guitar players in this world. Uh, mm. You know, of course, people aren't interested in the secular stuff, but uh, yeah. they think of it as all as evil. It's yeah. almost like the old Gnostics. The Gnostics used to believe that everything physical was evil. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. so uh, anything that wasn't spiritual that was uh, evil, and it's just not true. I mean, there's, yeah, there's people that are lost out there that are doing mm. things that, 
you know, we wouldn't approve of every little thing they do. But yeah. in the in, in the grand scheme, I mean, everything's not evil, you know. I looked into the Gnostics because uh, around the time of that uh, Da Vinci Code, I thought, what? Are you telling me there's extra books of the scripture that we don't know about? And then when you dig a bit, bit deeper, you realize, oh, these are Gnostic Gospels and these are like imitating. They're not really true, are they? You know? Well, some of them were mixed up, yeah. And they were written hundreds of years later mm. and they were influenced by the catechetical school doctrines. And mm. uh, so uh, there's all kinds of fabrications, like, you know, stories that never happened. Mm. And, uh, but the Gospel of Thomas is a different thing. Thomas was a student of Yahusha, and they call him Doubting Thomas. Mm -hmm. But uh, he had written that what, what was found in Nag Hammadi, uh, they call them the Nag Hammadi Codices, which mm -hmm. was the entire assembly of his writings that we have found. And it was the Gospel of Thomas. And it was just a bunch, it looked like a bunch of student notes. Like it was a, like when Yahusha would speak, he would write down the words and the phrases, but he didn't put it into a story form. He just took oh, notes. As oh. And it's interesting because a long time before the Nag Hammadi Codices were discovered, I can't remember exactly what the date was, but it was it was sometime uh, in the 1900s. And in the uh, 1800s, there was a portion of the Nag Hammadi Codices found in a place called Oxyrhynchus, uh, down the Nile by a pair of archaeologists. So if anybody wants to look into that, uh, oxyrhynchus is a Greek for uh, something about uh, a sharp snout. It's Greek. Mm. Yeah, it's a, it's a type of fish. It's a type of fish is what it is. Mm. Oxyrhynchus is a fish. But the city of oxyrhynchus, the ruins of that city, in the, in the garbage dump, they found the uh, so a whole bunch of documents. And... Mm. Uh, in one of those documents was this remnant that was uh, instantly recognized by one of these two archaeologists as being uh, the words of Yahusha himself. So they mm. took that, and, it was, and it, then later on it became known that Nag Hammadi, which was much further north, um, it, was, it was discovered that this uh, text came from the Gospel of Thomas. They didn't know that back then, though, where it came from or who wrote it. Can you see that online, or can you find that or read it? Or oh yeah, yeah, people could look up Oxyrhynchus and uh, Egypt. You know, you can't Nile. just type. You can't just yeah. type in Book of Thomas. Book of Thomas, that would be good too. Okay. Book of Thomas, yeah. Oxyrhynchus. Yeah. Uh, they'll all, it'll all come up. The dates and times that these discoveries happened and who. Who they were, I didn't retain the names of the archaeologists or even the exact date, but it would seem like it was in the 1890s, you know. So, how would you uh, dis, uh, establish credibility of extra books that aren't in the canon, like uh, you know, Jubilees or Jasper or Enoch? How would you decide whether these should be taken seriously and they're not Gnostic, they're not weird, they're yeah? You know, how would you decide whether they should be taken seriously, whether they align with Torah? Yeah, and not only that, but whether they're mentioned in in the Tanakh. And there's eight other references mentioned in the Tanakh that we don't have in the Tanakh. And that's interesting. So, like in Chronicles, I think it, there's one place where it mentions other things. And then, you know, the uh, Yobel or Jubilees is mentioned. Uh, in fact, it's quoted in, uh, by Yehuda or Jude. And uh, Enoch is also mentioned. And there's like five books of Enoch. You know, and he's mm. pre-flood. Mm. So Noah must have taken his documents on board the ark. Mm. You know, so or maybe, well, probably did, yeah. And he's what gave us a lot of the understanding about the Nephilim and the fall of exactly. Exactly. Enoch. He's mentioning these these angelic beings by name, you know. Mm. Yeah. The mm. name of their leader and everything, you know. It's amazing. So, uh, yeah, they were, but the, the difficulties that we get into, though, after we have accepted a book, is whether or not we're going to accept the exact English translation of that book. Because how the interpretation of words and phrases and understandings come across can actually mislead you into thinking, well, there's 360 days in the year. 
and that's not true now. If it's true then, maybe. But you see, that's how we can get into these, these horrible divisions now. Uh, like the Enochian calendar is one of those things that's going on here. I'm not addressing that right now, and I don't, I'm not being led to, but there is a whole bunch of Nazarim that are being affected by this Nazarene calendar. I mean, uh, Enochian calendar, mm. based and upon translations. They're getting that out of the Book of Enoch, are they? Right, right. Mm. And, of course, the whole idea of 360, uh, the number 360, is it's a rough estimation of a year. It's, mm. it's not exact, but it is a rough estimation. And it is what the Babylonian used. It was a, you know, a close enough reference. It's just like pi. It's an approximation, you know. Mm. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's great. Uh, anyway, I've mm. got to go. Uh, yeah. 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 Lovely to see you again, brother. <laughs> great to see you. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Mm. Well, we'll talk in a week, okay? Yep. Sounds great. And Wonderful. if you think of something to say, yep. uh, maybe a topic or two or three topics, yep. we can uh, prepare a little bit on those things. And, you know, but yeah. I like the alien mass. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just sent you the uh, revised hypocrites uh, study too. So um, it's been turned oh, into for length. Thank you. Found lots of wacky. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to blow the secret, brothers and sisters. There's two masks. <laughs> two witnesses. <laughs> yeah. I know you've been wondering. Yes, indeed. I'm yeah. in North America. He's in Australia. That's you right. Know. So, but, uh, we'll again, see you later. Yeah, it's been a pleasure, uh, brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining us. Shalom. Shalom. Yeah. See you, brother. Bye, love, love you. Love you, mate. Lo love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.